campaign is a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, because you don't understand politics, idiot. <clears throat> He's a man of the people who are dumb. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I can you it, let me ask you this: How many celebrities do you think should have really any political opinion that they spread? Celebrities or celebutants? <laughs> <laughs> don't use that word. <laughs> It makes a difference. Yeah, name one celebutant, bitch. Oh golly, you you don't even know anything about pop culture. <laughs> I you don't know pathetic. anything. I'll name you one. Uh, the Olsen twins are no. they still? Uh, no, no, they're not. No, I'll name you one. <laughs> Emily Clark. Okay. I don't know who that is. Leave me alone. Yep. There you go. Game of Thrones. You ever heard of that? Eat shit. Terminator Genesis. Ever heard of that? Uh, I think I've. Uh, yeah, I know Terminator. heard about those. Uh, I, I know yeah. Terminator. You know the second Terminator. You have not watched any of the other ones. I know this for a fact. I've seen the other one. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Name me one actor in any of the other ones. The guy any who, of the other ones. The guy who played the cop with the uh, really cool uh, finger. The guy who played the cop with the really cool finger. That is the metallic not an finger, yeah. The, the Terminator cop, who wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's still the second movie, buddy. No, 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 no. The first one was like super ancient and... Yeah, okay, good. No wow, 1980s. 80, you got that 84 one. 84 Good job. Right? Okay, number two? Number two was... You can the, do this. Number two was the one where uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger wore the um, the glasses and stole the Harley. Well, and, he wore and, sunglasses and, and coined, in the first one, too, And, actually. and coined the uh, phrase, I'll be back. And uh, had the little cool uh, red vision where he saw it out. He had a okay, shotgun... Fine. There's third no one? fate. There's no fate, but what we make, right? And the third one? It's the one with the um the cool uh, cop, the, with the uh, metallic finger that like zing knifed out at people. What was what was different about this Terminator? Tell me time? I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. Tell me what was different oh, about this Terminator? They had a different model number. Okay, so one it wasn't a he, so already you failed. Okay, mm -hmm. it was a she. Okay, hold on, hold on. I must be. Con well, there is another Terminator that. Uh, that just came out, sure. No, 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 It was no. a bad dude. Yes. Terminator. Well, okay. Maybe it was another robot. I don't know. You know the cop that wasn't Arnold Schwarzenegger who had the long blade finger? In the kitchen. That was the, the second scene. one. <laughs> it wasn't the same movie. Yeah, it was. There's no fucking way. That is the same one, buddy. Okay, then there's only one Terminator. You, you, were, you were so <laughs> sad and pathetic. Okay. You know what? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh it, oh, wait, I don't wait. even know why I ask, make you, uh, why on, I pose you pop culture questions. This is just sad. There's another one. There's another it's one. It's just sad. It's, <laughs> it's, it's where he's, uh, he's uh, lowering himself on a chain into yeah, that yeah. mat. There you go. Da -da -da. Okay, you're done. You're done. Da -da -da. So if anybody wants to know, Mr. B knows absolutely nothing <laughs> about pop culture or movies or whatever. And that's fine. That's fine. But when, it, when you're in denial, it's just sad. Mm. Just get with it, dude. What about the... One with John Connor. <laughs> it's good that you're that specific. Yeah. Have you seen but you know what? You're, you you're lucky. You're lucky, actually, because uh, you should have only stopped. You should have stopped watching it, too. Because everything else is uh, unmitigated garbage. Apparently, I did. Hot fucking garbage. All right? And, and you know why? Because every time you create a time travel movie, any t you cannot have more than, like, two. All right? Or three. If you go any more than that with a time travel movie, you are fucked. You mm. are so fucked. I mean, you got to keep that shit tight. This is a time travel paradox that you're dealing with, okay? I mean, already, we're pretty sure that you yeah, the paradox thing just can't happen. But given, you know, the suspended disbelief, fine, fine, fine. You just got to make sure that your paradox doesn't fucking melt my brain, Did right? Did you know there was a Terminator 4? Yeah, dude. Wow. Come on, man. Yeah, no, there was one. There's a Terminator 5, doofus. Come on now. Damn. Yeah, that's how much you have. You have three other fucking Terminators you haven't seen. You have seen fewer Terminators than exist. That's what's fucked up. I still feel like I lead a pretty complete life, so I don't know. You haven't missed much? I haven't missed much. You have not missed much. <clears throat> I could I could tell you the plot summaries of some of these other Terminator movies, and you'd look at me funny. You'd be like, what? Terminator? Why? No, nah, it don't it don't make no sense. And the last one, actually, you know what? We should record you watching some of this shit. Oh, you know? a reaction video? Or yeah, something maybe, like that? maybe I'll make you watch. I'll make you watch Terminator Genesis, and then by the time you wrap your head around what they thought was cleverness, you'd be like, Nah, 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 man. They didn't just. This is why again, 
I don't think that there's any writer out there that's talented enough to write a good time travel movie no more. Just, I mean, writing has been dumbified down. I mean, do you remember when people were like, Inception is complicated? <laughs> I can't even. I'm like, oh, what? Because there was three layers of <laughs> wow. thought. Wow. You couldn't you couldn't hold on to more than three, huh? You couldn't figure out that there was a dream inside of a dream inside of a dream. You're like, I'm lost. What a crazy symphonic score. Three. I re- you know what I, I remember about that movie the most? Here's a score from the movie. Remember the du- the age of the fucking dub step fucking madness? <laughs> I mean we're still we're dub still facing culture. that in goddamn trailers. Did did whatever the, happened the, to ringtones? Like really fancy ringtones. Did that just disappear? Cause what I, the fuck are you bringing ringtones up now? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? No, no, like it would be I hate I don't like dubstep and I'm I'm not a fan of overusing that sound, but Yeah, but you want that on your ringtone? Uh, that would be a pretty sweet ringtone. Okay, so ring here's tone. what happened to ringtones. They're still a thing, <laughs> except for you don't fucking give a shit about ringtones because again you're like, Oh, do they have the Jurassic Park theme? You're, that's all you know. Like you don't fucking know anything new. You know? You're Ta- disconnected. Hashtag time traveler problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically you come from a different time. You you were in a time capsule, they unlocked you, you just came out and you're like, yeah. so how many more Terminator movies are there? What? Three what? more. No. I'm done. I'm really excited for President. And they're gonna Clinton make another the first. one. They're gonna make another one after that. There's gonna be like four Ugh. Terminator movies that you will not see. The Terminus. I think so. we need that. That, but that's pop culture for you because nowadays you are hard pressed to be able to make something that's new, like create anything new, and it's just too risky. It's so, better to just redo old shit that people will fucking watch because they're they have terrible taste. So like you you were really into uh, comic books and stuff, right? Sure. When I was a kid, I think I just I stopped at basically seventeen when I discovered porn. That's when I well, started. Seventeen is still you know you were into it and. You know a lot about superheroes. You know about the universes. Unbelievable amount. It's disgusting. You you go deep into Spider-Man, ology, and all that. Sure. Oh, yeah. I even know why J. Jonas and Jameson hates Spider-Man, because I went back and I read the source material, man, and it's a stupid-ass reason. So, what is it? Oh, it's just that he knows Spider-Man's better than him. He literally says that. He's like, oh, I'll never be as good as him, so I don't like him. Okay, fine. Clear motivation, I guess. Bummer. What a bummer. That's pretty two-dimensional, but anyway. so <laughs> Early days of comics. Man. So the, the perspective of someone like me, and I'm, there might be some listeners who are in the same boat. I don't know, but uh, I'm aware of Batman. I'm aware of Superman. I'm aware of like Spider-Man. I had a couple comics, like literally two. Yeah, yeah, I right? remember. I, each... I, I, I basically stole your Spider-Man death of Superman because you thought, like every other sucker, that it was going to be worth something. Remember? Oh, You, yeah, you had it all sealed up and shit. Yeah, someone gave it to me, but like I never really got into that culture i never really religiously watched any movies i didn't go and buy the comics i would come across you didn't watch any of the cartoons saturday morning cartoons i'm guessing no no no. and i could i could appreciate just watching the cartoon if it came on but i I didn't i wouldn't follow it so i'm sort of on the outside of this whole movement but one thing i've really noticed is there there are a lot of superhero movies these days that's no surprise no but it seems as though like we're just taking a good decade or two and saying fuck you to all the original ideas that are out there yeah. and just going through old comics. It's like going through someone's attic. Every single Hollywood well, superhero movie is like reviving this old nostalgic what's, okay, story. Look, and where's the originality? But like, it, look, okay, come but on. You got you got to admit though, in most comic books don't lack in originality. That's not their problem. A problem with a comic book for the most part, and especially how they're done now with these whole, what if comics were real and let's make it gritty and... No, 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 no. See, the the issue that I have with most superhero movies goes back to the same thing that was starting up in 2012 and, and whatever. Was everybody's obsession with these apocalyptic, everything gets fucking destroyed, buildings come down, crashing, ah, everyone's dying kind of fucking movies. I mean, even the Superman that came out, Man of Steel, was the destruction of fucking Metropolis for a fight. We have this weird obsession with, with watching these kind of disaster movies slash superheroes. So instead of doing that, because again, superheroes could be interesting. I mean, there are there are superheroes out there. Like, for instance, I think they should make a movie out of Captain Ultra, a very not well-known fucking Marvel entity, all right? This is a superhero who gained his power after being uh, psychoanalyzed by an alien. Okay. 
His powers include flight, super strength, um, x-ray vision, and uh, super speed. But he has one weakness, is that he will faint if he sees any flame or fire. <laughs> he's basically useless. He's hilarious. He's Captain Ultra, where he's like, he wears this ridiculously colored costume. Because again, he's just this guy who inherited powers, but uh, that are effectively useless. Because even some of his own powers may make him faint. But he's a giant joke, right? Imagine you're a superhero and you have all these great powers, but at the end of the day, they're still useless because they just don't mesh. And, you know, you're trying to be a superhero, but you're a fucking just waste of space. You're going around probably destroying buildings or whatever inadvertently with your poor fucking power control. That is neat. That's a kind of cool story. The, the problem with most superhero movies now that you're watching is that they're power fantasies, right? You're familiar with a power fantasy? Yeah. But we're, got, we've, we're out of con fucking control with power fantasies. We just want to, I want to punch through a wall. I want to fly. I, I, you know what? You're a nobody. Get over it. Like, stop trying to fucking live this whole thing where you're saving the world. Saving the world movies are boring. They're so boring. Yeah, no, but look, look, it's... Uh, my, my point wasn't that uh, there are no original comic book stories. Of course there are. It's like a free-form kind of medium, right? You can do almost well, anything. Well, they, they also had to publish so and regularly novels and, that and comics that. have tried everything. Oh, everything. Uh, it, I believe it. I believe it. Everything's but, been written in a comic. But, but think of it this way. Like, if... You're just drawing upon this universe of stories that are essentially already written. And maybe you're adding a spin or two. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. But um, it's, it's, it's not as fun to watch a movie if you're the only guy who hasn't seen it. If the guy beside you already knows the story and you don't, then it's not as fun as like seeing it for the first time and uh, for everyone. So that's how I sort of feel about the uh, the whole like resurgence of these comic book movies. Like the stories are already sort of known, the characters are definitely known, and it's just yes, I know there's a ton of money to be made. It's inevitable. They're not going to stop making them just because of they they lack some kind of originality. But it just pisses me off, and I and I wish that that we would see a few uh, less. Uh, we would see fewer uh, comic book movies and a few more like completely original stories. Well, Movie, movies, movies that are art in and of themselves. But that's a general complaint. I mean, we could place the blame on superhero movies because they're successful, and that's what everyone's going after. It's, but if it was instead disaster movies, and that's all that was fucking popular, we'd be complaining about that. You're right. You're right. But it's the real problem is the lack of originality. It, that end story. I don't. I don't even think that's the problem. I don't blame the comic book artists who wrote the original stories. I don't blame the. The, even the filmmaker who said, like, hey, we just want to make some cash and here's a great story. It's a no-brainer, low-hanging fruit. Our investors want us to make some money. Great. Everybody else working on the movie, you know, you are you went to the film school or you're, you're doing some job on a movie. Good for you. You're working in media. Awesome. I'm not blaming them. I'm blaming the... I'm I'm actually blaming the audience for having poor taste. Okay, fine. But, like, let's... let's it, it's, it's kind of like how I blame the... Sort of American people for uh, supporting uh, Donald Trump. Okay, but let's before we get into that, let me let me talk to you. Let's pretend we're in the nineteen fucking fifties or something like that, and all of a sudden, our big complaint is, "Oh man, it's nothing but goddamn musicals." Meh. Why can't the audience appreciate anything that's original? Meh. Look, every fucking culture right now, you're living in geek time culture, right? They want everything from their childhood to be reality. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers. Uh, Gem and the Holograms. I mean, like, everything is being done that's from the childhood of people who are now in the paying age. Yeah, but can what... fucking afford tickets. D what happened uh, before? And what's going to happen after? Like, was the Terminator a book? I, I, I'm not aware. Well, okay, so it used to be that most, I mean, 90% of all scripts were adapted from books that were already successful. So the same, I mean... Uh, the movie industry is a business. It's not primarily interested in making art. It's primarily interested in making money. Well, it seems like they have a laser-focused intent to just go through every fucking comic book that's ever been drawn. Only and make because, a movie out. only and for one annoying. major reason. That's okay? really annoying. Only for one major reason. I'll use Man of uh, not Man of Steel, but uh, Batman vs Superman is a prime example of this. So Batman vs Superman made almost four hundred million dollars. Something like $360 million. And it's considered by the studio to be generally a failure, which slowed down their production of comic book movies. Okay? Because 
it doesn't take much for people to start fucking freaking out about whether or not the gravy train is going to stop. Whenever you have popular movements, like right now, science fiction is actually very popular, let's say, in the video game world. But there's there we reached a saturation point where now the next big console games that are going to come out in the, in the following year are going to be way like older shit. Like, for instance, Battlefield 1, where they're doing a World War One simulator. World War One. I. I mean, like, that's going back, man. I mean, like, I think this is a response to it. So my prediction with the response of the superhero movie is that eventually there will be one big one that's going to goddamn flop and flop hard. And it's going to put everybody, like, the brakes on everything, even though maybe they shouldn't even break that hard, but people always overreact. There'll be an overreaction, and then something else will come along that will tantalize people who are bored of watching people get punched through walls. And maybe it'll be a bit grittier, a bit realer, and a bit less apocalyptic, you know? Like, maybe just uh, human stories. Who knows? Yeah. But I, uh, if you look at young people, and, and, and what do young people fucking obsess about right well, now? Well, it, like, that maybe we could try to... D divulge some kind of prediction about what movies will be like in the future like YouTube stars are going to be in movies and they're all going to be terrible that's the future man it's uh, already started and that's what young people are watching they're watching their favorite YouTube idiots and these guys will have movies man do you want to see dreadful. that future it's just I know. dreadful I know but, but we're but, old the old guys will be like get off my lawn everything you make is terrible I know but you're referring to this thing where the movies being made today are nostalgia movies for uh, 30 year olds or, or whatever mm -hmm. they're trying to relive their childhood yeah they have the purchasing power now of course yeah. and they just want to pay to go Not to just a purchasing theater power. they make the movies they're the movie makers in many of the yeah, cases they're, they're the, they are the geeks it's for them and all By that them, but, but yeah. it seems like there was a time just before that when the movies were being made for like teenagers or kids and it was all about that like I don't know um, yeah, but the superhero... Are, are we skipping some sort the of... The Missing genre. out on some generation we could be making movies for? No, dude. The beauty of the superhero genre is that it takes the adults now and it creates content that's already suited for children. The adults have been consuming children's content for a long time. I mean, I stopped reading comic books myself when I was an adult. And the reason is that most of those comic books, like, you know, Superman, Batman, all that kind of shit... Is that you realize that these are these stories don't have any arcs. This is a massive problem in any fucking story, okay? You need a development, you need a beginning, a middle, and an end. That is a human life. But a, a perfect example is Captain America, okay? Captain America is was killed about three or four years ago in the culmination of one of their Civil War fucking comic books. Or franchise or whatever and there was like a big oh we killed Captain America look at us but like every single comic book hero and I mean that literally almost you just get resurrected there's no stakes like how is that interesting how is it how are characters that never die interesting they're not they have no fucking emotional depth meaning or whatever everything they do is like oh my god he sacrificed himself for but he's gonna come back like it's, it's fucking worthless just because they're so afraid of losing these characters and they don't want to make new ones. Well, you know what? You guys are cowards. I, I'm calling right now. You guys are all cowards. All right? You don't think there's another Stanley waiting for new characters to be developed and everybody's like, well, we already have so many. We don't need new ones. <sighs> what a waste. What a waste. But you know what? We're going to get over comic book movies soon. Two more, two or three more years Can't and it's going to be over. wait. Yeah, well, you don't go see movies. What was the last movie you went to go see, uh, B? I, I see some movies. Like, I'll go see a James Bond movie once in a while. I saw Cloverfield. Cloverfield? Many, many years before that. What was that 2013? Um, what was that Good one? Uh, uh, District 9. I saw that. Buddy, once. come on, dude. I mean, in the last three or four years, all right? These are movies that are playing on TV, for God's sakes. I've seen a couple. I can't remember. They weren't that good, honestly. I don't blame you. There's not a lot of great movies that have come out. Uh, I'm not excited about any movie except for one. One which is just a, a fucking masterpiece. Uh, we should put a link for this in the show. It's a movie about Vincent van Gogh. And it's made entirely from paintings. That's amazing. Something like 160,000 individual paintings. One, I want to buy one. Because... Wouldn't it be awesome, like, you know how they usually sell memorabilia from fucking movies? Well, how about one of the goddamn paintings used in the movie? That sounds amazing to me. But it's it's painted in the style of Vincent van Gogh. Wow. 
first painted animation by Breakthrough Film. This is this is this is what a visionary shit is all about. This is the kind of thing I don't care if the movie's a piece of crap. Wow, some of these you support that shit. Some of these stills from the movie. I know. Are fucking great. I just want one of those paintings, maybe wow. two. They're just amazing. Man, I just want some of these for my fucking exactly house. living room. I want to put that on my wall. Tell me that every single one of those paintings is going to be sold. Wow, I mean, like, hundred sixty thousand. Hundred sixty thousand. If you paid, what if you got like a regular movie ticket for whatever they're going for, ten bucks, fifteen bucks, or you got the hundred fifty dollars. What about getting a, a raffle? Painting? No, you get a raffle, and then oh, you have every, a chance of winning a fucking painting. I bet you every screening they could afford oh to give away God, that a painting. painting. Wow. wow. They should really think about that. You know, we should send them a message saying, like, look, I mean, I know this is a great movie and all that you're trying to make, but you need extra incentive. Sure, it's an artist, probably an artistic masterpiece, but, but that does not force people out of their fucking homes, okay? Yeah. Think of why you made the movie in the first place, why you chose this topic. For the love of art. Yeah, for the love of Van Gogh. For the love of Van Gogh. For the love of Van Gogh. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are nice looking stills. This dude. is pretty cool. Wow. It's pretty cool stuff. I taste. mean, it's definitely worth seeing in a theater just to... I mean, I don't know if it'll make you dizzy. This is That's some incredible. It's definitely some new... You, you Is this new for you? Or are you just being introduced to this right now? I saw a preview. I didn't quite catch what Maybe was Maybe you didn't understand on. what was I didn't going. understand the You depth, didn't get it. The depth of what they were doing. You're it's like, who, who, so preposterous. Who would commission 160,000 paintings? Just if they were just individual paintings. Who would commission that? How could they afford that? And who, then... Who were the artists who made this? Well, they obviously were didn't they make it. Were they sweatshop? I don't know. Are these sweatshop paintings, dude? How long did it take? When did it start I don't filming? Know. But this is this is obviously a work of like love from people. Are they, they didn't paint each goddamn frame painstakingly. I hope they used some... a fucking algorithm or something. No, amazing. dude. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Mm-hmm. It tells you that there are still people trying to do yeah. artistic things out there. Up with that, down with fucking comic movies. Eat uh, an artistic but, thing. Okay, so you have to understand that there's another element of movie making to... And this will not go away because this is the consequence of living in a global village. The bigger your village, the less... Or, or I, I, in a sense, the more homogenous the culture that you're going to have is going to be, which... Which means that you have very little choice as to what you can be guaranteed to make money on. So, you know, Superman. I, I release any Superman movie and I can't lose. I can't lose because his the global knowledge of Superman is just too high. Over the long term, people will be giving me money to just see this thing that I did with Superman in it, right? But create a new character in this world today and you're taking a massive chance. You have to compete against everything that's already out there and popular. And that's a fucking nightmare. And, and in a sense, I don't know, are people oversaturated? Are they tired? Are they, are they fucking tapping out and saying, like, I got, I'm, I've, I've had it, you know? Like, I just, I can't memorize a new name. I can't see a new movie or a new franchise. I'm done. Like, is that where we're at now? Is it, is, tell me, is the, the, these popular uh, comics and movies you go to, is it, you go to is it like sports is it just something for people to do and for people to talk about and they just brainlessly flock to whatever event or screening or movie or unveiling is uh, is happening is, is it like that is it is it a little bit brain dead and mostly mass entertainment no 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 no, no. the main are reason are you sure about that i would describe the, the and you'll never see superhero movies actually go away ever again and the reason is because the superhero genre in terms of its lexicon and everything else like that is closer to a religion than anything else. Like Marvel has something like along the lines of 20,000 or 25,000 characters, individual characters that they have. Um, and there are some people like, you know what, I, I, I thought that if one day if I retire, I would offer Marvel to be one of their scribes because I have read a lot of their uh, documentation and found many flaws in their, uh, you know, in their history and their power ranking management system and all this other kind of stuff. Essentially the same thing that Christian scholars used to do, which is to separate canonical works from non-canonical works to determine what is the hierarchy of angels and all this other fucking useless bullshit that people fucking 
distract themselves with because life life is tough okay and sometimes brutish and you just need something to distract you and superheroes are a pretty fucking fun way to do that and that's why there are some people who are like biblical scholars of comic book heroes and that will never stop like they they are on the they are the same thing as gilgamesh the ancient story of like the 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 god king who basically you know went around beating giant fucking animals with his best pal does that not sound like a comic book basically yeah i yeah, guess i guess yeah, pretty much uh. yeah well you know what you did just you don't have to watch them but your real complaint is the fact that look superhero movies are fine but if everything else didn't suck then you wouldn't be complaining you'd be like superhero people have their shit yeah you're and right. then you can have your own stuff but you, you know don't what? have your own stuff that's yeah, the problem yeah and we happen to be in this like crest of a wave of these fucking movies so it feels like there's nothing yeah it but. feels like that's all but you know what you're forgetting i, I know it's not true I, I know i'm sort of blinded by all these fucking Comic well, movies, what you what you're what you're forgetting is that while you're everything not, else sucks. While you're not living in the age of great movies, you're living in the age of great documentaries. <clears throat> That's the fucking difference. I don't know about that. I think the age of great documentaries sort of died a couple of years ago. There's what? there's nothing going on these days. Come on, you're out of your mind. Attenborough is sort of. And no, 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 you're you're still stuck in the old school ways of documentaries. Yeah. I'm saying that. Documentaries What's a good documentary are... that came out like in the last couple months? Foxcatcher. What is that? It's basically about this one guy, the heir to the DuPont family. Oh, they have a shady, shady. Who created history. basically this wrestling camp and then shot and murdered the prime guy because he was just a nutty dude. And, wow. And, and, and they showcase like the kind of degradation of the whole thing. Yeah, it's on Netflix right now. If you haven't seen Foxcatcher, I Fox Catcher. definitely recommend you watch it. Uh, wasn't there a strange uh, sordid past of the DuPont family regarding uh, the, the, the empire, the chemical empire as well? Some kind of murder in the family a long time ago? You know what? You're asking me uh, something that I do not know wow. about. Now, that now I'm intrigued. I, I, I'm but like, yeah, what? okay. So th I, I feel like there aren't as many good math or science documentaries. They all sort of have either been done okay, or they now you're just well being they've been specific. done or they're sorry they all, math boy they all sound the same the history channel sucks dude you wonder how much it sucks the history channel featured fucking ancient aliens <laughs> ancient documents. aliens like saying like did ancient aliens build the pyramids <laughs> I, i'm sorry but an hour and a half full of questions leading questions <laughs> is not a documentary <laughs> Ding dong. I want to ask a question to humanity here. Do you really believe that human beings can't build pyramids? Huh? Yeah. Because we've built pyramids. Because there's all over the, the place. Like, yeah. they're, they're, it's not even original. There, there are cultures that don't know anything about each other, and they fucking build pyramids. What's the recipe for a pyramid? You need to know how to cut stone. You need to know a bit of math. You need know to drag shit. You need to have slavery. Presto! You Actually, got... the the pyramids in Egypt were not built using slave labor, or that is a, a really organized workforce. They were not they were not super well paid, but it it even ancient Egyptians understood that if you had too many slaves in your economy, it would create like serious inflation. Right. And basically destroy your economy, which is what actually one of the things that happened to the Roman Empire. There they were overrun with slaves, and then basically the Nobody could negotiate their their, their labor, uh, which is kind of what you're you're like now, right? You you have a slave class. Like, how many slaves are there worldwide, Tom? Like twenty million estimated slaves. I think it's quite a, a high number. Yeah, probably more slaves now than have ever been like slaves. Like, we have a ser serious motherfucking problem. I don't mean like accumulated. I just mean at one time. Have we had this many slaves? I'm like, uh, probably not. That inequality, though. Yeah, and and slavery has a lot of different faces now. Like, slavery is a worker in Dubai from India who basically works 50 or 60 hour uh, weeks and will often just, he, you know they don't urinate? They sweat so much that they don't pee, ever. Hmm. That can't be good. Yeah, not so much. That's like a renal shutdown. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> build that pyramid. Yeah. Eh, eh. You build. Uh, there is an estimated four thousand people that will die to build the stadiums necessary for the World Cup. That that's more people that died building all the pyramids. 
One of these days we should talk about Rio 2016. We will. Fail. We're gonna goddamn do a show about that, but not yet. Not yet. We might do more than a show. We're gonna about do. That. We're gonna start talking about it, especially with the Olympics coming up. But we're before gonna, we do that, we're gonna watch the Olympics from the Zika free zone of Canada. But before we do that, I just want to wrap up. Like we just grabbed a whole bunch of topics and just ran with it. I don't even think we talked about most of the topics I wanted to talk about. Mm. Doesn't matter. But let's talk about one I did want to talk about, which is Donald Trump. Can we talk about Donald Trump for a second? Tremendous. That, yeah, that's tremendous. So apparently, uh, there's two bits of news that came out of Donald Trump at the same time. The first one was that the leader of North Korea, the little fat kid who was given like uh, the keys to the castle, was was praised by Donald Trump. Uh, praised for what reason? I can only imagine because he forces his population to worship him like a god. I mean, like, what other can you praise that leader for? For keeping his people in the 1980s? Like, I don't even understand. You, you, you know you can't sneak in technology past the 1980s there. They, <laughs> they stopped technologically there. If they saw an iPhone, they would probably freak out. Oh, you will go to jail if you bring a USB key in with a couple movies on it. And that's what everybody smuggles in from yep. China. Yep. And people are, people are obsessed with these USB keys. There, I, I can't even imagine how much USB keys. I believe are in we North call Korea. it the sneaker net. I mean, do you have a? Do you even use USB keys anymore, Mister Cloud? So antiquated. The fuck is that? What am I, Amish? I remember when USB keys were, you know, sort of given out as presents for a little while because people thought, hey, you know, I need, I need ways to share data, and the internet is <laughs> somehow not fast enough. From one computer to another. Now it's faster to just bounce your data off the freaking internet yeah, to much. the computer right beside you pretty on much. the same desk. Yeah, other than fumbling around for that fucking piece of shit USB key that you have to wait till it loads, safely, you know, sort of like disengage. Oh, just just a bunch of hassle. But the Korean, for the North Koreans, this is the latest in technology, yo. Fucking USB keys showing them the outside world. Like, they are aware of it. So yet yeah, praise that motherfucker. So he get, he gets an endorsement from quite possibly the most inept world leader uh, in the world. Well, so, it's sort of the the one endorsement you don't want to have. Yeah. But I, I think Donald Trump uh, volleyed a compliment at him the other day. Yes. So I think he's just returning the old reach around. But that's why favor. I was asking, like, how do you compliment this dude? Good job on on what exactly? He's got moxie. My favorite thing is that so um, in North Korea. Has this fake no? Sorry, town. he 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 didn't want to. He didn't compliment. He said he would be open to talk. Okay. Fantastic. Tremendous. So I, wa I want you to find out the name of this town. But there's there's a town that is within visible distance of the border of South Korea, and it's a fucking fake town. The buildings they have there have no fucking windows. Uh, they're all painted in these weird colors. But North Korea has created a fake town. To look pretty so that people can see it and be like, oh yeah, no, no, they're living like normal people over there. Uh, but now we know it's fake, so the investment is bunk. Well, they probably don't know that we know it's fake. And they don't even care because I think that to some degree they're probably the population. Like, if you build a fake city, how do you justify that in your own brain? Like, it's... <laughs> You had to build it. Although, you know what, that fake city, it... do you know how many ghost cities are in China? Apparently... I was reading somewhere that there are 67 million vacant apartments in China or something <laughs> That's along like that line. That's like one or two towns, <laughs> one or two cities. <laughs> one or two major cities. Huh. Like there's a lot of ghost towns in the world. So Yeah, the North Korea fake town, it uh, doesn't even look that good. No, it looks, it's weird. It eh? looks very Eastern European, but still better than North Korea. But like look closely. No windows there. Those are well. There's are fake not. windows, but maybe no doors or some weird like that. Maybe. No, no. Many. Uh, I'm saying many of the windows are just not present. They're oh, hollowed right. out. Yeah, they're, yeah they're I like, got you. I got you. You don't put glass because glass wow. will break. There's even a monument and a huge freaking flag. Yeah. Wow. These are crap. Fake <laughs> motherfucking cities. <laughs> a water tower full of rats. So the second thing that happened to old Donnie is that um, a judge who uh, allowed the uh, court filings for Trump University to be released to the public so that people could read it, specifically because Donald Trump is now a political candidate. 
So the uh, you know the the person who's in charge of the civil case you know presented this idea that because Donald Trump is now a public figure that it's in the public interest and the public good to know what the fuck this is all about. Now Donald Trump his first response was to basically blame the judge for being Mexican. Not a lie. Huh? Yeah. Now I remember Donald Trump in my youth and I don't remember him this fucking racist like this campaign and his pandering have completely, well, not completely, but they have definitely changed him. There's no doubt about that. Like, I can't even imagine a world in which Donald Trump would have blamed a judge fighting against him for being Mexican if he was just a standard businessman. But he's not a businessman anymore. Does he, does he even want to do business? Like, does he realize what will happen after this election, like, to his businesses? You heard about his hotels? Nobody's booking. Yeah, the, the bookings are way down, uh, just like his stakes and his university and his... Uh, well, the stupid people that else. support him can't fucking afford his shit. All they do is buy his stupid red hats that make America great again, but that's all he's selling to these idiots. And the rest, by the way, there's a cottage industry of fucking people who are not Donald Trump making money off this whole Trump campaign. I even wonder if Donald Trump might sue these fucking people. Like, I wouldn't put it past them. Oh, you made money off me. You can't. Yes, they can. You're now a political figure, buddy. Uh -huh. The rules have changed, and I don't think that Donald Trump will like the way the rules change when you're a political person. But you know what? The threat of being sued in the States, just it's so expensive to even have a lawyer to fight that bogus charge, which will get thrown out eventually, is still a serious threat. Like, the threat of being sued is still a cost to you. Well, so it's not like he just won't sue. He probably could and maybe would sue just well, as a dissuasive measure. I, st I am still unsure about what people will um, do about the fact... Because most politicians who go into politics and will use... Well, this is a bad example, but we're going to use uh, Dick Cheney as a perfect example. When Dick Cheney was vice president, they asked him to kind of step down as... You know, I think he was, was he, uh, I, I, I don't, I forget what his position in Halliburton was, but it was pretty fucking high up there, right? He had to do this in order to kind of have some propriety, right? He's like, well, I'm not favoring Halliburton when I give them all these contracts because I'm not technically gaining, you know, from like monetarily, except for he basically did later when, you know, he went to work for them again. But that's not the point. The point is that he had to make that appearance. With Donald Trump and all of his various little businesses and shit like that, how is that going to work? How is he going to yeah, is he gonna recuse put himself some... from all of the different business interests that could be affected by I think uh, political power? Maybe battle? Halliburton will just hold on to them for a while. They, they're good at that. <laughs> just, cool. just give it a Halliburton. Is what <laughs> Tommy Boy... They will quadruple your cash while you're in office. <laughs> as long as you give them a little something-something. A little bit of Trump steak, if you know what I mean. A little bit of something-something. Although I, I think that if you were to ask what the... I think half of the Trump phenomena, if you want my honest opinion, is definitely the race baiting, the, oh, you know, our country's fucking falling apart kind of shit. I'm going to offer a solution, blah, 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 blah. Right? But I think that another part of it is just basically America's own lack of confidence and hope in their own government, which is very, very well-founded. And... Even the person that's running as his, you know, a, a, opponent is the most establishment candidate that you could possibly imagine. Like, I don't even, I can't even think of someone who would fit that description of me. Like, how how could you be more establishment? You've accepted a billion dollars worth of fucking foreign monies from all from from who knows what people who didn't have to fucking tell you who they were. So you you sound like an independent to me. Everybody's going to goddamn love you. All those cynics about politics are going to come vote for you, Hillary Clinton. You're such a great candidate. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> are you still feeling the burn, America? Uh, are you still feeling the burn? And then, of course, you're going to have What's all those happen? people that supported Bernie Sanders are going to be like, I'm not going to show up to, uh, to vote. What a mess. It could be kind of a disaster, and maybe that's Bernie's leverage. Is like... It's me or nobody. Well, you ha you also have to remember that the the, the State Department and the uh, FBI have not cleared Hillary Clinton uh, over the whole email shit. You're like the election's coming up. 
could could you could could people make decisions for that? And of course, the State Department or the FBI or all these people are run by partisan individuals, so they may <laughs> themselves wait the last minute, try to fucking like once you know Hillary Clinton is confirmed as a candidate, and then just fucking just torpedo her with legal issues until the cows come home. And then how effective can you be when you got that running? Right over you. Good job, everybody. You surely picked the perfect candidate. Yeah, it seems really messy as a candidate right now. Like you, there's baggage you got to deal with. There's baggage, but right, Hillary Clinton has no chance of being a president if she doesn't win this time. She'll be, it'll be too late. And by now, if you run for president, the odds of you not having a second term are very low. Like you have to have like something right. bad happen. Like you know what happened to Jimmy Carter for him to not have a second term? He tried to rescue those hostages in Iran, and his helicopters crashed into each other. Okay? Ouch. It was a fucking disaster. Like, the rescue effort was an unmitigated... They didn't even get to the fucking hostages before they got themselves killed. That's a bummer. Yeah, that's a fuck... They tripped over themselves and fucking shot themselves in the head with a gun. Talk about a great rescue effort, right? You, you yeah, gonna I mean, get I another guess... presidency after that? Well, yeah, I guess the president's accountable for... Everything, even military blenders. Well, he is the commander in chief. So... Yeah, but he's not. The, yeah, you're right. You're right. He's the commander in chief. He will be blamed for those. And let's not forget that at the time, Reagan and the fucking Republicans were actually secretly fucking making arrangements with the Iranian hostage takers so that he would appear like the hero when they were released. Yeah, it's some freaky fucking sketchy shit. Shit. No wonder everybody's so tired of the political fucking scene that they're like. Let's hire a businessman who scammed people. So here's the beautiful thing, though, with the whole Donald Trump. So Hillary Clinton has her whole, hey, the State Department might bring you to trial. But now the date set for Donald Trump's trial is in November, hmm. right around the election time, too. So both candidates are going to be in fucking legal conundrums. Come what on. What a now. mess. Come on. Get your shit together, America. Come on, Come on man. Come on. Get your fucking shit together i mean if you were if you were austria or some other dipshit country that didn't have such a goddamn huge influence in the world we wouldn't care but you do you know kind of run the free world thing get your fucking shit together man can't stress that enough can't stress that enough anyways g whitaker i think that pretty much wraps our show we have a commercial though Coming up, don't we? Ooh. We're going to end with a nice little funny commercial for you. Kind of liven things up. Indeed. Because you know? that was some depressing shit we talked about. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Termin we ended with Terminator a bummer. Two. We should have ended with a movie shit. Not fucking ended with his political garbage. God damn it. <laughs> hey -oh. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. Well, anyways, if you like the show, just leave a comment. Be sure to tell your friends about the show. We're still trying to grow. I mean, this is show number, what, two now? Hey, guys. We need, we're, we're going to need your support. And, you know, because we've released a bunch of shows, like right now what you've probably noticed is that there is more than one show that went up at the same time. We decided to, we decided to release a big content dump because we know how it works. If we just released one show and that's all you listen to, you'd be like, what the fuck? No, we're going to take a big dump. We're going to do a big content dump, so if you pro by now you probably heard like two or three shows and you're addicted already. What? So you got to tell your fucking friends about it, about this new show that you're going to listen to on Mondays. It's going to make the Mondays seem maybe not so bad. Or maybe horrible. Don't listen to them all on the same Monday, you maniac. It could you be a freak. Well, it'll be a great Monday, though, if you listen to like four <laughs> you shows. Get back to work. You're going to get fired. <laughs> Seriously, four hours of podcasting, man. Get back yeah. to work. Productive. Yeah. <laughs> you work for us right now. You didn't work for anybody else. So yeah. do that little extra thing and tell your friends about it. Just say, go and uh, go and listen to the show. Don't even force them to subscribe. They'll, they will when they listen to it. Trust All right. Me. So now that you're settled at your desk, we want you to walk over to the printer, extract the hard drive with a copy of all the documents. <laughs> Send it over. Send it over to P.O. Box. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. That's our money plan. All right. Well, with that, money plan. remember, remember, everybody, it's a sketchy world, so be careful. <laughs>